Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining for another session of Azure Power Lunch. Uh, uh, MTAS, uh, you have the floor, man. All right. Thank you so much, Navid, for bringing, uh, giving me an opportunity to present some of the things, which is very common scenario in the in the out business for us as a techie guy from Microsoft guy. I wanted to just uh, give a quick uh, uh, brief about uh, the overall migration uh, uh, strategy from Microsoft, which we have been dealing with customers. So first of all, thank you so much and good morning, everyone. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. Um, uh, just a quick uh, intro about myself. This is Imtiaz Ema uh, Microsoft Cloud Solution Architect focused on uh, Azure Infra and App Site. I'm part of South Central team and taking care of a strategic account based out of Houston. My prior experiences have been with Infosys, Accenture, CSC, and in fact, Microsoft back in 2004-05 as a vendor. All right, and Navid, if I'm going too fast, uh, do let me know because I'm trying to cover a lot of things. So the way I have put together uh, my uh, session is it is going to be threefold uh, PowerPoint presentation, will, which I'll try to cover in next seven to eight minutes. And then I'll be giving a walkthrough of the Azure Migration Center documentations and other things step by step. And then third is going to be demo based. All right, so digital transformation. I know we all have been whenever we open a dialogue with any of our cust uh, uh, strategic customer or even enterprise and we talk to any CXOs or directors, we keep on hearing digital transformation. Either they open the discussion with uh, digital transformation or we open uh, the discussion with digital transformation. The reason for bringing it here because it is tightly integrated with migration and migration is the first step towards digital transformation. So basically just a quick uh, uh, a snapshot about digital transformation. So things are it is very economic uh, imperative and companies are being forced to transform themselves to be uh, to remain competitive. And those who are not, they are out of business or they are they are uh, suffering a big loss. And if we will just take a step back and see our day to day activity dealing with a lot of businesses, we we are we deal with a lot of uh, businesses who are digitally transformed. Either you talk about Netflix, you talk about online shopping, you book your flight, you take the taxi like Uber and uh, Lyft, you you book a, uh, a hotel table uh, uh, in, in the restaurant for your dinner. All of most of the things we day in day out basis, we are dealing with online booking or online reservation system, online shopping. These are all the things are because of the those companies change their business by embracing and leveraging the digital trans, uh, digital world. And it has been transformed significantly in last two, two and a half decades. So why digital transformation comes into picture? This is little marketing slide. I want to just spend 15 seconds on this. One thing is for sure by using the digital transformation strategy and taking your stuff into cloud. You can companies can focus more on uh, doing the innovation and focusing on their core business, and they can just offload uh, more than 80% of their administrative uh, work to us who are the cloud provider on that. Second thing is app. Definitely, I mean, whatever we have been using in traditional work uh, world, waiting for six months to put the bill of material and wait for the server, that we can get the servers and infrastructure up and running on just few clicks. Third one is data. I don't think I need to talk about that because this is huge uh, acceleration on data analysis, which uh, cloud brings on the table. Now, I've been talking digital transformation and uh, cloud migration is one of the first step to start the uh, transformation journey for any of our customers. And that's why I will just keep on talking about that. So whenever uh, we go and start the discussions with our uh, customers, still customers. I mean, that used to be uh, six, seven years back that they were feared about the security and other things, but still some of the customers, their security team have these few of the questions opened here, uh, open in their mind, which I try to put it over here. Like they still ask that, hey, is cloud secure for my application? Can I really modernize application with minimal disruption? 
do, do I do have all the proper tools to do the migration or digital transformation? So these kind of questions are still coming up and we as a uh, as a provider for cloud, we should be having answer to all these things. Now, so whenever uh, we uh, again talk to customer, the first thing is we have to just step back, look for and listen deeply to our customers migration trigger or their business driver. If someone comes and say, I want to just go ahead and get into cloud, there might be multiple reasons. It can be data uh, center expiry. That's why they want to get into that. They acquire some company. They need some scale. They are having a uh, scale and some of the company, they said, hey, my, my hardware, whatever the data uh, center I do have, it is coming up to the refresh cycle. I don't want to spend time and money on that. Some of this because of compliance. So there are multiple drivers. And my request to all of us is that whenever we start any discussion on digital transformation and migration, we should first try to understand their business drivers and uh, the triggering point, because that can help us to position appropriately the urgency and migration need and the uh, strategy for the customer. For example, uh, there are two different uh, strategy can come up because of these drivers. So if they do have driver of any of these four fives, Ooh. which I have just put together at the start, the driver, the strategy can be different. But if they do have application innovation kind of driver, the strategy can be different. And let's see what the strategy here we are talking about. So if they are saying that, hey, I want to get rid of my data center because of XYZ reason or my data center is out of uh, uh, service life, this is the first thing which we are going to take it up, which is purely driven by IT oriented, uh, uh, IT oriented migration strategy and driven by timeline. So there it goes as a rehosting option where we say that, hey, I want to just take it up your workload from on-premise and shift into the uh, cloud. Is it best? Probably not. But if it is meeting to the uh, business drivers, we have to do as a first step. The second step on this path can be once you are in cloud, definitely you can start uh, identifying the application which can be modernized and leveraged the true benefit of cloud by doing either refactor, re-architecting, or rebuild. I'll talk about these three items. So. In this path one, which is ops efficiency initiated by IT uh, oriented migration trigger, first step should be you should rehost, which is lift and shift, and then second should be you can start modernizing whatever can be done. The second path can be if that is not driven by uh, uh, the first few drivers rather than they are open and ready to listen the app modernization strategy as well, there we can go both in parallel. So some of the infrastructure which cannot be really modernized that easily, you can still go ahead and do it and lift and shift. But some of the uh, workload which can be uh, app modernized, you should definitely looking to modernize and leverage the uh, uh, cloud uh, cloud features like a platform as a service kind of offering. Now. So as I was talking about these two paths, there are multiple options. One is rehost, refactor, rearchitect, rebuild, and uh, replace. Let's quickly see how they are different and what can be the best uh, suiting for individual customer. Rehost means you need not spend uh, uh, any effort on that to do any changes to the application, rather trying to take it up as it is workload and shift into or migrate into uh, uh, Azure as infrastructure as a service. Refactor is next step towards the modernization, but very minimally alter your uh, application, try to containerize it, put into the container in Azure as a platform as a service. Rearchitect the next step where you say that hey, I have got little giant application. I want to break into a uh, multiple uh, services or some modules and leverage platform as a service like uh, I want to use uh, web app, and uh, those kind of app services, just go ahead and try to re-architect it. 
Rebuild is definitely, I mean, it is a greenfield project where you will be doing the brand new uh, development by leveraging all the cloud native technologies. Okay, this is marketing slide. I'm not going to spend time. The only thing I want to just uh, uh, make you reiterate that on Azure security perspective, you can understand we are spending almost a billion dollar per year as an investment. 3,500 experts are working to take care of the security. And on an average, we are getting 6.5 trillion threats signals on daily basis, which we are analyzing. That's the only thing I want to highlight in this particular slide. Rest of the things you guys pretty much aware of. Again, this is another marketing slide. I'll just move on. Security, uh, governance, resiliency, monitoring at Automate. We embrace everything end to end. And I mean, we are at par. That, that's the only word I want to use here. Now, when we talk to customer again, uh, we have to just look back and see that what are all the possible uh, migration uh, projects can happen, which we can pick it up. Most of the customer will be talking. The majority of the projects falls into these four bucket, either Windows or Linux migration, SQL Server or any data migration or VMware or on-premise migration. So majority of workloads or projects fall into these four buckets. But some of the big uh, customer, strategic customer like oil and gas kind of customer, and as well as other strategic customer, they, they do have a specialized workload running either on SAP, HPC, or any other giant uh, application on legacy system. So we need to identify that what kind of uh, projects we are going to take it up. Migration path, again, uh, you just uh, pick it up uh, uh, on-premise or VMware, migrate into infrastructure as a service. Second can be you are taking it up some of your apps, putting into uh, um, Azure infrastructure as a service. Another can be that, hey, you have got uh, apps to infrastructure as a service, as well as databases to uh, managed instances. Here, everything can go as a platform as a service. So there are multiple variability on this. We want to make sure all these things are in encompasses into single thing, which we call it as Azure Migrate. So Azure Migrate is a one stop shop on the Azure portal. It provides the capability of everything. Deeper application discovery. You can do the discovery of your physical servers from on-premise, agentless as well as agent, because some of the things which we must have to do agent-based, like physical server uh, uh, discovery or some of the dependency for the applications, but we are just going towards much more on agentless. I'll be talking a little bit. .NET application, if you want to migrate to Azure App Service, uh, here is the uh, assessment tool available. Now we have introduced the VDI virtual desktop infrastructure migrating into the Windows uh, virtual desktop. We uh, in, encompasses a lot of our uh, 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 partners tool, so it provides the partner tools as well. You can leverage it. Now with this, I want to just uh, flip back to uh, uh, the actual demo and uh, uh, walking, uh, giving you walkthrough of our documentations. All right. So if you want to get end to end everything, first you should do azure.com slash migrate. That's your landing page to get all the step by step migration. So whatever so far I have spoken about that, everything you'll be getting here. Start your cloud transformation journey, assess, migrate, optimized and secure. And if you want to just learn more about Assess, you just simply click here. It'll give you step by step that, hey, create your migration plan, involve your stakeholder, calculate TCO, everything. And come below, it'll just give you a recommendation about the tools. Here, this is our existing native tool. Here's some of the uh, third party tool, but this now falls, Movere falls in our bucket. The only thing is we are not selling any licenses. It is going to be cloud economic assessment by our partners. So here you will get the recommendation about tools, when to use what. And if you want to engage the team, who, which team you should be engaging for what purposes. Again, once you jump into the next phase, migrate here for migration perspective. I was talking about all the options, rehost, refactor, rearchitect, rebuild. 
Here you will see for rehost what all the things you should be looking into. Rehosting to infrastructure as a service, rehost as a database, or optimize it. And even if you are talking about rehost, there are the four steps. You can just navigate step by step and you can get to see all the details. Definitely, I need half day to give entire detail, but I'm just quickly giving you walkthrough so that you can get a sense that where to reach and what to do when. Rehosting database, again, all the steps are mentioned here. You can easily navigate through and then optimize it. All even optimized perspective, you can go to everything you can get on azure.com slash migrate. You should be able to come back and get everything over there. The one thing I want to just uh, uh, again bring you back here, azure slash migrate. One is uh, TCO calculation, total cost of ownership. This particular tab. So here, a lot of uh, our uh, CXOs, they want to see the TCO before they go ahead and take any decision. So either you download the template or you can simply click on this. It will open a tab and it will give you all the TCO calculations. So for the sake of this presentation, I already filled out the detail for this. Hey, I have got with these many servers. I have put 20 uh, servers. How many databases I'm going to migrate? What's the storage look like? How much networking I'm going to put it? Just put all the details. It'll It'll just uh, uh, help you calculating your total cost of ownership. There are a lot of other parameters which you have to factor it. I did not uh, mean to go through all these things, but whenever customers are talking, make sure they are not just comparing server to server. They should compare how much labor cost they are spending, storage cost, electricity cost for the data center, because they have tendency to ignore those things. So they must have to just factor those things. Once you just put all the data center cost and everything over there, it is going to produce uh, a very good uh, intuitive uh, of TCO cap, and you can get to see all the details. You can export it, download, export, share uh, to your customer so that they can get to see. You can help customer or customer can do it by themselves. It's all free of cost and they can easily get on this. Now I want to just go. So this was a one stop shop for getting all the documentations, a step by step guide and everything for Azure migrate. OK, now I'm just going to flip over to Azure portal to see how you can get your hands dirty on that. You are on Azure portal. Simply go ahead and create, click create resources. Azure Migrate. So basically on Azure Migrate, this is a, a single stop shop on the portal to carry out your either your assessment or actual migration either from Hyper-V on-premise, VMware on-premise, physical server on-premise, databases migration, are your web app uh, migrations. Everything is embraced into single place, which is Azure Migrate. So if we'll see all these bucket, buckets are shown here, Windows and Linux server, SQL and other databases, web app, data and virtual desktop infrastructure. Sorry, I was forgetting this virtual desktop. This is also encompasses over here. And all the assessments and tools details are available here. You can click on this and you can get to see TCO calculator, whatever I have shown that is also here. We do run a program called Azure Migrate program, AMP, that if you want the detail and engage the right team, you can click on this and you can get your uh, uh, right resources engaged over here. So I'm just going to quickly go through this, uh, assess and migrate server. First, I have to create a project. So in order to project um, uh, create a project, I have to make a selection of the tool that what all the tools I'm going to use it. Let me just give the name. Demo and geography is US. Okay, so here you'll see there are two select two tools. We are going to make a selection. First thing is for assessment. Another is for migration. 
So assessment, this is our native tool, but there are a lot of uh, partners tools also available as well as the mover. Mover is again our tool, but it is based on uh, cloud economic assessment done by partners. So I'm making a selection of the simplest, which is server assessment, which is our native tool for assessment activity. Similarly, migration, you will get to see a lot of migration tool, but I'm going to use our own uh, server migration tool. OK, add to. This will just take a few seconds to add the tools and your project will be ready. Once your project is ready, basically you have created a migration project where you have made the selection of the assessment tool and migration tool. So now your your uh, uh, project is ready. You can start the assessment and tool. So I have cre already created that. I want to just flip over here and I want to just I have only for the sake of presentation. I already created this. Contoso migrate. This was my project which I had created. I carried out the assessment. My assessments are here, so this has already assessed almost 400 virtual machine and assessment. I grouped into multiple grouping just like I want to do the assessment for my uh, production environment, even production. I want to do it for database as a separate assessment than front end layer. So all those things I did it. So basically I have created one group that is called. For web applications, so the this is the assessment. Once you carry out the assessment, it produces the report like this. Azure readiness out of 19 server for 15 are uh, ready, uh, ready to get into Azure. Four of them are require some uh, changes which make uh, which we need to which we may need to do before we migrate it. It does the cost estimation as well, provide storage as well as compute. If I want to just go ahead further uh, drill it down, I can just click on this and it can list it down all the VMs and individual VM wise that towards the readiness for those servers. These are all the VMs are ready. Some of them are conditional ready means they have to they require some attention. Either it is not supported version like conditionally endorsed Linux VM, unknown OS or something like that, and you have to take some uh, some action on that. If I move to cost detail, this is very interesting because what it does, whatever the data it has collected from on premise, it does the calculation based on that. And if I'll we'll see uh, all these details, it is giving the compute as well as the storage. And you can change the para, uh, parameter based on the your estimation. So so far, the way I have done uh, the uh, the estimation is based on my on premise and uh, number of VMs, on premise, all sizing things and other things. I did it. If you want to just factor the reservations, you want to just make a selection of your managed disks and other things, everything you can do it over here. Sorry for rushing a little fast because I want to make sure that I can cover most of the things. OK, now I'll just quickly. So this is the assessment part. The last part, I, I have just put a simulation to see how migration would look like. So this is our uh, migration. Uh, I mean, uh, Azure migrate stuff I was just showing. I want to just go ahead and do the migration, actual migration. I click the server. It brings uh, those tools, whatever I make the selection of those tools. I'll say uh, that, hey, go ahead and migrate make a selection of the server, whatever it has already discovered. Hit my. Once uh, it is start doing the migration, you can go and see the overview how migration is going on. Migration is currently 0%. It will take some time to uh, carry out the migration. In order to see the details that what all the steps have been followed, click on the jobs. It will give you all the details about your job. It has created the replication policy, associate the replication policy, started replication, completed initial data seeding, which is the first uh, copy of the uh, uh, replication. Uh, then it is uh, completing the migration, which is applying the changes and delta logs to the final destination servers. So once migration is complete, you can get to see all these steps here. And once it is complete, you can click on your replicated machine and you can get to see your uh, machine has been replicated over here, migrated status. Come back to overview. 
this is going to be completing your migration. All right, so I have left over four minutes for questions and answer. So feel free to ask questions if you have any. Yeah, folks, please unmute your mic uh, and ask the question. And again, sorry for rushing very fast, but I want to make sure I can cover and give you a quick overview. Well, that's, I mean, it's great that we have all that information in one place instead of like going from one place to the other. So you can get all of that. Right. So always yeah. go to uh, azure.com slash migrate. And in fact, you can ask your customer. They can always start from there so they can get get a very consistent approach. Step by step guide tools home to engage at what time everything is step by steps available over there. Yeah. Uh, folks, just one a reminder of uh, uh, we will be taking a breather, uh, so there won't be any more calls uh, Azure Power Lunch call for this year. We will start from December the 10th, uh, January the 10th. So 10th of January, yes will be our next call. So we will be so I will be canceling this invite and send a new invite and hopefully that has better results with IM availability and all that because there was a bug in teams which was causing this issue. So anyways, we will there won't be any power lunch session um you know for this year. We will start uh on January 10th with a uh, you know um, with again and with uh, ex Azure topics, so. Yeah. So final call, any questions, comments, feedback? Okay, just thank you very much. I really appreciate your time and thanks everyone. Have a wonderful holiday season and hope to see everyone next year. Yep, thank you. Thanks everyone. Have a nice yeah. weekend. Thank you. And Mtas, can you please send the presentation? Uh, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome.